It's a bit being, I, I think 10 year olds well, love it because you're yeah, pretending yeah, to have yeah. horseships. Mm. It's like being a 10 year old. I and think it's also, people are taking it seriously. I like mm. that. And also, yeah. I think they're kind of modern characters dressed up as historical characters. Monty Python held their reunion for the Holy Grail this past weekend in New York City for the Tribeca Film Festival, but we were able to discover some nuggets from Terry Gilliam and Michael Palin that some fans may not know. For instance, there is Terry Gilliam's long-awaited Don Quixote movie. Of course, because I'm still alive. <laughs> That's why. I'm working on it right now, but I'm not going to talk about it because I'm working on it. <laughs> then there's the revelation from Michael Palin that they were supposed to do an unofficial follow-up film to the Holy Grail. I remember ages ago we were actually wanting to do um, a new movie, which was going to be about the, um, the knights. Uh, or in this film, 30 years older, you know, <laughs> and all going off to the Crusades. And they were all, you know, it was, it was partly historical, like the Holy Grail is. And they would go off and rescue maidens in Germany and all that, and everyone would forget right, where they were going, what they were going. And, and we did get that together, and um, I, John didn't want to do it at the time. The cast seemed to have a good time during their reunion chat with comedian and TV personality, fellow Brit John Oliver. They recalled that the American audience and network TV didn't know what to make of them at first. When we were first on American television, we came down, we toured Canada in 1973, and we went down, and we were on the Tonight Show. And we were new, and then who was the host of it? It was somebody, Joey Bishop. Joey Bishop was the host. He said, and we were supposed to do 30 minutes material on live on the Tonight Show. And he said, here's some guys from England. People tell me they're funny. Ladies and gentlemen, Monty Python. And we came on, and I think it was Graham and I went, Oh, what have you been? Where have you been? I've been burying yeah. the cat. Really? Yeah. Yes! It's not dead yet. Oh, it's a yeah. full bloody night. And we looked out, and it was like the producers, the film, the whole audience, <laughs> their jaws were open. Yeah. And we did the 30 minutes in 15 minutes. Yeah to no loss whatsoever, yeah. and we ran out, and there was a bit of green grass in Burbank, and we lay down and we laughed for about 15 minutes, just how, because it was the funniest thing ever. We'd been, there were, in Canada, anything we said, they were falling about laughter. America, they didn't know what on earth we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> We were dressed in drag. At we were the time. in drag, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just totally puzzling. I mean, I'll were... tell you what's really funny. When, when, you, when you're on stage and you do a joke and about six people in the audience go, ah, <laughs> you really want to kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. but when there's complete silence, it's hilarious. Yeah. But is, is that because it's that almost out-of-body experience of thinking the only reason I'm on stage is to entertain people, I'm failing in doing that, and I'm dressed in drag, yeah. and I'm an adult, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> it's, kind of, it's inherently ridiculous. They then talked about the Monty Python live shows they did. About the live show, which is fantastic. And one of the most exciting things is watching you really wrestling with making it as good as you possibly could, even once it was up and going. There's an amazing scene uh, with you, John, where you're backstage as the show's going on, saying to the camera, we're going to cut this sketch about halfway through because I think it's going to work better. Was, was part of the fun tinkering as you went along of those 10 shows? Yeah, because, mm. you know, the audience is king. The or if, you make, if you make them laugh, you've won. And if you don't make them laugh, you've lost. So you really listen to the audience because they're, they're, they're part of the show. And you say, why didn't mm. that work? Or that'll do, you know. And they're the litmus test all the time of whether it's working. The really refreshing thing also was that they laughed more if things went wrong. So, you know, we had a real fail-safe <laughs> safety net there. If we got, forgot the lines, they thought it was hysterical. So, you know, anything that went wrong was... was Tell them what Eddie Izzard said to you. Uh, Tell them what Eddie Izzard said to you. Oh, yes, that's right. Dear Eddie Izzard, came to see the show how many times? Six Eight or nine times. times. Six or seven times. And on the second night, I, was, I saw him there and I apologized to him. I said, I'm sorry I messed that sketch up because I actually got a line wrong in, uh, in Michelangelo and the Pope. And he said, no, you don't understand. I said, what are you saying? He said, what your point is that all the audience have seen you do these sketches correctly many times. Right. It's much more fun for them yeah. when you f*** it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. 
Yeah. And so John f***s his up every night, <laughs> deliberately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember, if you want to hear about more from the Tribeca Film Festival or your favorite movies, please click the subscribe button down below. And as always, we'd love to hear your comments below.